for those of you who can hear background noise. I am aware that I am broadcasting audio. I'm trying something new with the uh, letting people actually come into the stream, not that they do, uh, and then not starting for a few minutes. So just uh, chill out, uh, expect a few minutes of silence unless I forget that I'm wearing a mic. Not wearing one. Or, well, I am wearing a mic, I guess. Never thought about it that way. Um. Boy, this is boring. But uh, maybe next time I'll like mute the audio and be getting ready while this happens, which would be a much better idea than trying to frickin' wait it out five minutes. I think I tried this once before and it didn't go well. For those of you watching the recording, this is truly pointless, but you can fast forward. Have you ever noticed that five minutes goes by very quickly when you're enjoying yourself and extremely slowly when you are waiting for time to pass, which I am currently doing? I sort of felt like Andy Rooney there for a second, but um, Andy Rooney, I don't know how many people would remember him. He was on 60 Minutes. He was sort of a comedian for you know, un, v not very funny comedian, but sort of the kind of comedian you'd expect to see on a program like 60 Minutes. So I don't know if I just insulted him. I probably did, huh? Uh, well, Andy, wherever you are, I'm not sorry. You did kind of suck. And on my own machine here, by the way, I'm looking to see if there's any interesting last-minute um, questions that we could deal, probably can't deal with on the stream. They're, they're going to be... Um, they're going to be too recent and too... Ooh. Interesting. Um, yeah, they're going to be too recent, and I'm going to have to, you know, at least see if there's a hope of answering them by me. Um, so that's not going to happen. Okay. Yep, definitely not going to talk through this next time. Um... And I really don't want to say anything about the agenda because that would be unfair to the people who actually are waiting, who are smart enough to wait. Not smart enough, sorry, if you're stupid. Um, people who are nice enough to wait the 10 minutes or if, you know, if you're fast forwarding through this um, and you're watching a recording, uh, I don't want you to miss anything. You know, with the standard denigration that uh, you won't miss anything anyway. I'm so funny. Some of my friends are streaming right now, some of the people I follow. 
Um, but obviously I don't want to watch them because I won't have much time for them. And I don't want to watch them on the VM because that would lead to a very bad things have happened before. Uh, my commentary on other streams does not go well. And I guess I don't get to do any, like, pre-stream banter that sounds like I get caught unaware when the stream starts, which I would normally do. Uh, which I'm okay with not doing, actually. I think uh, that having a small buffer here is, is acceptable. Of silence, which this is not. This is not the sounds of silence, neither is it silent, nor is it the song, The Sounds of Silence, by Simon and Garfunkel. Uh, Paul Simon and Art Garfunkel. Good song! Um, and I think it's about the internet, but, uh, you know, that's, that's neither here nor there. Um, la, 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 la. Okay, that was some humming for you. Um, getting excited now. Uh, it's about, it's because I'm watching porno, but, that, you know, still. Um, it helps me get excited about the stream. This is just random blabber. If I ever run for president, this is gonna... Well, no. I guess it won't come back and haunt me. Alright, everybody. It's 1700 hours universal coordinated time. 10 a.m. in Albuquerque. Noon in the Eastern Time Zone, and I'm not going to go through every time zone in the world. Um, welcome to the stream. And this was just a test to see if I could bring up um, a stream buffer message. I'm not really crazy about it because the the text, although you can see the time in the upper left corner, it's very tiny compared to this. So I will consider this like a failure. Okay. Um, now let's see what the hell we're doing. Okay, I tried several approaches to get the... Uh, stream buffering thing going. Um, it turns out, uh, yesterday we were looking at, uh, we were looking at the same problem we've been looking at for some time now, which is um, this problem here. Whoa, not that problem. Um, this problem here. If you're on a great circle, what's the shortest distance to a given point not on the circle? Um, I came up with a hideous expression for it. I have decided, because this is the math stack exchange, a closed form is not really a good idea. If someone had done this with programming or something, I would have, um, I would have probably posted my hideous formula. And I might anyway. I mean, it's still posted in the sense that it's in my GitHub, uh, but I'm not sure I want to publicize it yet. Uh, yesterday, uh, someone wonderful, Miglobite, um, mentioned something that I just sort of blew off, which was, can your uh, Rosetta code, the code that converts from one language to multiple languages, create functions that call each other? Uh, so instead of having to do this all in one function, can you have like, uh, you know, one function and then have it call other functions? Uh, originally I designed uh, Rosetta so that people could have mathematical equations in different forms. Uh, in other words, there would be the sort of standard form that's written in LaTeX, um, you know, and then the form in Mathematica, but then in lots of other languages because, so you know, if you just need the formulas, you have them. Um, and again, that's not a great idea because usually the formulas I'm giving would be included in an astronomical library or something like that. So, uh, you, you know, and, and I don't want to discourage you. So those, I just want to say, for some reason, you need these simple formulas that I'm creating. Here you go. Uh, but again, I'm not sure that's a great idea for any reason. Um, so today, mm. we're going to go back to try to solve the problem, um, which is not this problem. Twitch, what? Your mama. Okay. We will go back to Replit in a second. What we're going to do here is we're going to, uh, as this says in an attempt to be funny, uh, use the cross product. And it turns out that you can really, really use the hell out of the cross product uh, to get pretty much everything you need. You can get the, uh, you know, x way along the path. You can find the closest point uh, to a given other point. All this good stuff if you do enough cross producting. Um, and so, um, now, cross-producting is nothing like cross-dressing, although I'm guessing that would be helpful in some situations as well. Then, we're going to really poke it, uh, poke it a little bit. Um, 
Previously, I thought about answering questions on Stack, which I can do to, if I want to annoy people, but I can also ask questions on Stack. And one thing I'm thinking, and I've thought before, um, and I've mentioned before probably overly much, is I'm not really happy with this. I mean, this matrix is actually pretty short, but it's inverse is hideous. I'm sure it can be simplified. And when you don't want to do something yourself, you know, get other people to do it for free. That's the, that's the rule. Uh, so we will, after we take the cross product approach of everything, uh, we, will, we will go ahead and um, try to post a question to uh, Mathematica that says, do this work for me, or there's no way this could be the simplest formula. And when I say that, I mean the inverse matrix, uh, which is much, much, much worse. Um, you know, there's no way this could be the simplest formula. Okay. Let's, ooh, shiny. Oh, this was my attempt to give a partial answer, which I've decided not to give, so we can... Uh, um, I think we can end the comment here. There we go. And then we can say work, and I use the word work very lightly, below 8 January 2020. And what we're going to do is we're going to use, just to confuse people, we're going to use GeoGebra, because I really like how it confuses people. Uh, so let's go over here and go there. I actually tried this a little bit yesterday on my own. Um, am I signed in? I guess so. And it sucked. It wasn't very good. So I'm not very confident of GeoGebra to do what we wanted to do. But we're going to give it a shot. Okay, so for this, uh, we do not want to show the surface plane, it turns out. It's going to get really ugly here very soon. Uh, okay, we're going to go ahead and go to this tool thing. Although, um, oh wow, I didn't realize you could line them up like this. Um, we're going to create the unit sphere. And when I say unit, I mean, oh, come on. Um, I'm going to yeah, we will mean the unit sphere. We're going to zoom in a little bit, though, to get a better perspective. OK, there we have it, the unit sphere. Let's zoom in. Now, yesterday I discovered that it's, um, when you zoom in, uh, I discovered this earlier, actually. One problem here is, even if we go back to this, um, oh, that's kind of nice. Um, I was going to say it's hard to see the bottom. Well, okay, it is a little bit hard to see the bottom of this. Of the oh, cool rotation, um, zoom to fit, and that's actually what I wanted to do there. I wanted to get the whole sphere in the. Come on, seriously? Yeah. And well, I guess, and I guess because it's a sphere, we're not really um, too excited about it. So we we don't. It looks the same in every direction. Um, uh, the point B is the only thing that actually distinguishes right now. This happens to be one zero one zero. Uh, wait, really? No. Hang on. Point Y axis. Um, I want B to equal one. Nope, not two. Um, that was not groovy. Oh, uh, maybe it disappeared my sphere. Oh, you know what? I can actually do a sphere from the, the, the intersection of the x and y coordinates uh, like this. In fact, I think, I think I can even do this and get rid of this and this. And I think I can actually delete them, not just... Uh, there you go. There's a sphere of radius 1. Not very exciting. Um, yet. And now what we're going to do is we're going to try to find two points of which we're going to, uh, you know, create sort of a great circle. One problem is this sphere is going to be way too opaque, so let's go ahead and just fix that right now. Uh, settings, color, would make this sort of a light bluish earthy color. I mean, that's, if you know, earth when you're on acid. And we're going to bring it down to almost zero, um, almost zero trend. Whoa, that's not what I wanted to do. Not, not good. Um, nope, that's also not what I wanted to do. All right, let's take a look at those. I think maybe I had to like hit um, hit save. What? Your mama. Hang on. Wow, this sphere is really. Maybe we'll choose a lighter color here. Wow, that's still really bright. 
Um, lighter color? Closer to gray, closer to white. Wow. Okay. Well, let's try keeping it here, I guess. Um, that still looks really ugly to me, but let's, I guess, we'll have to live with it. All right, now let's go ahead and draw two cities. I'm going to draw them quote unquote randomly. Um, I am going to, and I'm going to draw them as vectors. Uh, so we're going to get started with that right away. Uh, everything is a vector. And, okay, vector. Starting point, then end point. So starting point will be right here on the origin. End point will be somewhere on the sphere here, but we're going to be careful not to make it like too specific. I mean, not too lined up with anything. There you go. And now we want another vector. Goes from here. Oh, I don't know. Let's say, yeah, let's make it a little bit there. Okay. All right. So now we have this lovely uh, two cities. Um, and I guess we're going to, we don't need to show point A. Um, oh. What I meant to do. Point. Which one of you is point A? Speak up, Spartacus. Okay. So now we have points B and C. Um, not crazy about the dotted line for the vector. I could probably fix that. In fact, let me see if I can fix that. Um, let me restyle this vector here. And settings for the vector. Nope. Oh, I guess we have to go over here and um, they've either changed this or I just don't remember it like this. Um, let's see, the vector, color, style, line style. Okay, so some reason it thinks it's already not a dash line, but we're not going to, we're not going to care too much about that. Okay. Why are B and C now sticking way out of the, um, way out of the earth? Okay. Not cool. Hey, and suddenly my, um, my settings for the earth variable went well. Okay, well, let's move point C. So it's, come on. Move it so it has length exactly one. This is not going well. It, I was hoping for a snap to. Can we, yeah, we have that set. But I don't know if the uh, if uh, the center of the, the sphere is considered a snap two point. Apparently, it's not. I can't. I'm not getting any sort of snap two isness there. Um, yeah, this is this is bogus, man. Um, of course, we could edit these uh, these numbers here so that it is um, so that these are vectors in, you know, three space and they actually touch the sphere. Um, but we should be able to, we should have been able to just, you know, put them on the sphere. Uh, maybe that point that it was uh, showing me earlier, and here's something, I'm guessing you guys can't see the spinning as well as I can. Because um, it is not a very fast, the stream is not very high resolution in terms of frames per second. Okay, um, so not happy about this, um, although I thought it was going to get pretty ugly to begin with, so maybe, maybe this isn't super important. Um, I mean, we need to fix this, but I mean, I'm trying to see if there's other improvements we can make here. Um, and, oh great, now they're on the, no, that they're not, sorry, that's just the, uh, angle at which we're looking at it. It's actually helpful to like spin the sp spin. Oh, come on. There we go. Uh, so you can see what's going on. It's a little bit easier to see in three dimensions what's going on. Um, and for some reason our planet is kind of going away. Stop, stop moving. Oh wow, there's like a thing going on there. Okay. So, so what do we do here? I think we don't really need to see the axes. They're actually confusing, especially since we're going to have a whole bunch of points here. Um, and oh, that doesn't look too bad if these things were touching the frickin' sphere. Um, all right, we're going to delete you. What the hell? What? 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 
No, no. You, pointy, be moved. Wow. That, I mean, that may or may not... Uh, it's not. Okay. Well, Mr. Smartass Program, I am going to delete everything... Uh oh Except... I said delete. Be gone. I think maybe I just need to do delete. There we go. Screw you. That's what you walked in on. Okay. No, you too. Bad. Bad, bad. Uh, we do want to show this sphere. We don't need to show its label, though. I think this has changed. I don't remember having to go through all this. So don't show label. Okay, so when I don't show the label, the sphere changes color. That's that's probably not that's probably a bug. Um Okay, this is just freaking weird. I don't even know why we're getting like this lighting window here. There's no light well there actually might be light coming from somewhere. So this looks kinda weird. Okay. Anyway, now let's go ahead and draw two vectors on the surface. And, um, actually we want to draw three vectors. One is going to be the one that's sort of coming in. The one that we want to find the distance from. Um, seriously going to regret this. So, well, let's use it. Let's just create a vector with a center point and a length. Ah. Uh, uh, so we have lots of cool things here. Prisms, tetrahedrons, tangents, line, segment with given length. Okay, it's not a vector, but I don't think we can make a vector with a given length. But let's quickly check. Um, vector from point. Yeah, that's not what we want. Let's go ahead and move line segment with length. That's 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 actually pretty useful. Um, let's see here. Point line segment with given length. Um, Okay, that's actually not bad. Let's do another one of those. Same point. I know what you're thinking. Hey, how do you know that A is at the center? And I don't, but... Um, that's not what I'm going to do. Cancel. We'll get rid of you in a sec. So segment with a given length of 1. Okay. What? Seriously? Well, you need to be... can't do anything with you. Oh, okay. Alright, let's go back over here and delete like 90% of this crap. I think I can do multi-select. Do I have to do it like shit there? And then... Oh, maybe there's... maybe the mass delete requires me to do something else. I used to be able to just, oh wow, I used to be able to just, I think I do want that one though. Um, Uh, wait, I want that segment. Actually, I want point A to be the origin. And we don't even necessarily have to label it. We will go ahead and let it sit there as a... We will go ahead and look at it, because it is sort of an important point. Uh, B is a point on the sphere. Oh, wow. Oh, good, good, good. Now I can control it, and it remains on the sphere. So that's very nice. And now we're going to draw a segment between those two, but first... Previously, segment with given length. 
select a point and then enter length. So we want this point, length one, okay. Oh, it took a second. Okay, that's why. Nope, 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 nope. Not going to fall for that again. We need to go back into sort of motion mode here. This is very nice. I like this. Okay. Um, I'm tempted to put our axes back now. Because we do, we, we, we do have some, or we do have a fundamental orientation for the Earth. We don't, hang on, not quite we yet. I want a segment from, can I just say here, G equals segment A comma B? Well, I mean, I should be able to, right? There we go. Okay. So <laughs> what was the point of all this? Well, the point of all this is we're first going to try to find the Wow, this is not easy to look at. Okay, I'm going to keep it spinning for a while. We're going to find the vector that's perpendicular to C and B because it will help us find uh, a, a way of uh, looking at the circle that goes through C, B, and A. Um, so actually, sorry, the first thing we're going to do is find the plane that, a, you know, the origin and these two points are in. And that I know we can do because I did it yesterday. It is, I'm going to stop this freaking animation. Um, plane through three points. So this point, this point, and this point. And there it is. I'm going to change its color and stuff, but that is the point. Uh, that is the uh, the plane in which a, a C and B and O lie. So depending on how you look at it, you can look at it like this if you're looking at it edge on. And you can look at it like this. It is, by the way, a full half circle because uh, this is the, uh, the line that splits them. This here is a great circle. Okay, and then what we, what the way we can refer to this plane right now is through a vector perpendicular to it. Uh, and of course, we're going to choose that vector to go through the origin because that's the easiest for us. Uh, there's plenty of vectors perpendicular to it, but we want the one that sort of gives us a very nice system. Now, um, I'm trying to find a way to draw the circle, the great circle, that, you know, it has A as the origin and has C and B as points on it. I don't I think I can do that, actually. Unfortunately, it's going to get really cluttered. Circle with axis. Circle with center. Circle through. OK, almost. Circle with center. Um, curves, ellipse. Circle with axis through. Uh, I think that I could do that with the perpendicular. Now you might say, why can't I use A, C, and B as my points? Because they're not going to all be on the circle. A is going to be the center of the circle. Um, that's not what I want, unfortunately. Um, let's see. Intersect two surfaces, not quite. Circle with axis through, and the axis is actually going to be the perpendicular of these two vectors, of these two segments. So let's actually get the perpendicular to this plane. So like point. Oh no, I'm sorry. We're looking for the perpendicular line to the plane. There's another one for that though. Perpendicular line. So it's like point and perpendicular line or plane. So we, this is our point, and this is our. Okay, and there is our. Um, I'll, I'll say lovely, I guess. that There's our uh, perpendicular vector. Unfortunately, honestly, I'm not sure how, how helpful this is. Um, I mean, these three vectors now form a basis. So, you know, we can have a coordinate system. But unfortunately, oh, man. Uh, you know, maybe it's helpful to not see the sphere. Well, I mean, we'll keep it because we want it, but... We don't necessarily need to look at it. Uh, is this better? Not really. All right, screw that. Can we also not look at the um, the axes? Okay, so this is actually not bad. This is the plane that they're in. This is the vector that's perpendicular to them. I wish, kind of wish I'd, you know, made it not infinite. I don't know how to do that actually. Um, is this a line segment or is this a line? What is this? perpendicular line. Oh, it is a line, so it's infinite. 
Um, we might be able to use the same trick we used earlier, uh, which is to draw a line segment on top of the line and then delete the line. So it'll, we'll have the same we'll have the same condition. Okay, so why does this all this help us? Um, um, have I drawn B and C to be like perpendicular to each other? I have. Not good. Yeah. Um, yeah. And B is still limited to the sphere, so that's good. Okay. Because we don't know that this, you know, what, we're what they're calling G is going to be perpendicular. So we don't know that. In fact, we now need to draw a line that's perpendicular to both this line and this line. So we can have a, a this, is not, this is not a basis because this angle is not 90 degrees. We can create a basis by creating another line. Yeah, I, I'm falling down the rabbit hole here. A line that's perpendicular to both, uh, and we need to give these names that are not B and C, to AC and the line that's perpendicular to those two lines. Okay. So select point and perpendicular line or plane. So, um, mm, hang on. Point. And then line. That is not what I wanted. And also, I should probably not have done that. Okay. Because uh, I drew two of them now. So this one is going to be deleted. Okay. Um, come on, why can't I rotate my... There we go. Okay. And the idea he here is now if we draw a line that's perpendicular... Hello, fierce crocodile! Welcome to your home. I don't know what th if that means anything. I'm doing well. Um, we're looking at the same problem, and we're thinking you're pretty reliable when it comes to stream. I am not streaming time. Is it? I mean, I'm streaming really early today. Um, 10 o'clock my time in the morning uh, is pretty early for me. Usually, I don't like to plan anything before noon, but who knows? Maybe maybe this will become uh, maybe this will become consistent and help me get up earlier and get ready earlier. Um, but I don't know. It, again, these streams, I just, I just do them for fun. Okay, so we do have the perpendicular to these two lines, but now we need a perpendicular to this and this. In other words, we need a perpendicular that's in the plane, and that will uh, create the, uh, you know, create the sort of, uh, the great circle, uh, that we need to, uh, the great circle that we need that goes through B and C. Um, but then, this is the exciting-ish part, we can actually do better than that. We can draw the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the um, vector to the point we want the distance from. And then we can get a vector that's perpendicular to that and the vector that was perpendicular to BC, which again, we're now, and that would necessarily be in the plane, and it would be, it would not be where the C hits it, it would be perpendicular to that, but then we do it one more time, and we get a vector that is perpendicular, uh, that is parallel to, um, still the stupid circle, gosh, you and your geography. Yeah, I'll be stuck forever in this circle. Um, yeah. Um, Actually, I learned today that the Earth rotates during flights. Well, yeah. Um, the, earth, the Earth rotates all the time. I mean, uh, no, because... Um, oh, I see what you're asking. Yes, but we're... we're yeah, we're not actually... Um, you're correct. Uh, but, uh, no, we're treating the journey as... Um, well, airplanes try to fly the Great Circle route, which they don't always do. But if they did, this, the, well, the Earth is flat, yes. But uh, it's easier to model as though it were a sphere. It's one of those wacky things, you know, where we pretend. Um, so, yes, Earth is flat. The olives touch. I'm pretty sure you meant some, the, the parallel lines touch. The, uh, the, the olives. I mean, that just sounds like 
it could go either like really beautiful romantic metaphor or it could be like something dirty would you like to touch my olive in Rome if you know what I mean um, no ITD from Asterix I don't know what that I don't know what I know Asterix used to be um, uh, the name of uh, like a voice a VoIP vo voice over IP but I don't know who it the ITD is and I don't know I think it's asterisk the comment okay and again you have once again uh, asterisk and bellix oblix okay lots of names I don't know but they appear to all end in IX so that is or ELI oh uh, no no just IX so whoever they are g good luck to them I guess I don't know um trying to s is it helpful to have this plane drawn here or do we not even need that Learned it in Latin class. Never mind. Asterix is like star. Bellix is like I don't know what I know. I don't know what Bellix is. Obelix sounds like an obelisk, but um, um, yeah. Sorry. If you want to explain the joke, go right ahead, and I will. I will repeat the joke explanation on stream. Um, but I don't get it for right now, and I'm now beginning to wonder if the plane is what we want to be seeing. Ah. <sighs> Good to complain. Dude, did you not have a childhood? Yeah, my childhood uh, occurred with like Dennis the Menace, uh, Family Circus. Uh, we didn't have pros before swine, for which I am eternally grateful. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, we had Gasoline Alley. Uh, we had Blondie. We still have some of these. But uh, it's a comics with an exit, with the druid in their movies. Yeah, I love this one. Okay, good. I mean, that's um, that's great. Uh, dr I know what a druid is because I used to play D and D. Um, I I know that comics with an X used to be mean independent label comics, uh, right around the early '90s when uh, people wanted to put up competition to DC and Marvel. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I I I. There was an event in uh, DC Comics called Crisis on Infinite Earths. Most of my reading is before that. Um, now I'm just typing fast. Uh, okay. Groovy. It's a, it's a good distraction from this piece of crap here, but... Uh, let me go ahead and make the plane invisible. Ah ha ha ha! Invisible plane. Get it? You, d you know who has one of those? Asterix or the Adventures of Asterix is a series of French comics about Gaulish warriors. Uh, okay. I don't know why they, you would say Gaulish instead of French. Gaul is French, uh, is France, but okay. I guess the word French warriors is kind of an oxymoron because they're not really much of a fighting people. <coughs> okay. God damn it. Yeah, this is not going anywhere fast. It's quoted from the wiki. Well, good. Thank you for quoting from the vi wi the wiki. Wiki. I'm Russian. I have bad accent. Um. Okay. Well. Kind of stuck here. Let's put them right on top of each other. Th there will be no perpendicular vector. So we're going to go to plan uh, C17 which happens to be the second plan. I don't know why it's numbered like that. It's quoted from Americans.tztz Yeah, okay, fine. Insult my country one time more and we will attack you. Uh, but I am actually Russian and I do not speak for Russia. Okay, so clearly that sucked. In fact, it sucked so bad, we're going to, uh, well, we'll leave it up, but we're not going to do anything with it. Okay, so here's the point. Here's the sort of point I was trying to make. Um, I think we said the vectors we wanted to look at last time were like, um, we called them points A, B, and C, I believe, is the is what we're doing. Uh, yep, A, B, and C. Okay, so we're just going to write some stuff down that isn't even in Mathematica notation. Um, cross A and B to get vect which we're going to call V1 perp to both. Okay?
across A and V1 to get vect V2 in plane of A and B and perp to A. So this now forms like a little basis here. Now if we have more here, what vector do we need? Did people respond to the post? I never actually posted it. Remember, I got, it got as far as like the middle of it, and then I was going to post the rest of it, but I decided earlier today, um, because it's a math, math forum, um, you know, if it had been like a programming forum, I would have said, show me some code, show me some formulas. But with math, I think they actually did a pretty good job of explaining how you would go about doing this in math, uh, but not necessarily giving a process, because, you know, in math, it's, it's more abstract. Um, so what I'm doing today is I'm trying to see if we can solve the same problem with just doing multiple cross products. Uh, and I believe we can. Um, and that doesn't mean the formulas are going to be nice, but uh, if I want to actually solve this problem, uh, it'll be sort of nice because it'll solve the problem even though it takes multiple steps, and each step is kind of a cross product. And cross products aren't that difficult to do, so I mean that's, that's, that's something that can be, we can port to a language very easily. Okay. So now note that note V1 and V2 form basis for great circle through A and B. And that is actually really important. Um, and okay. And the other point problem here is when you take a when you take a cross product of two vectors that are of length one, you don't get a vector of length one. You get a vector of a different length. And that's okay up to a point, but when you start using them as bases or whatever, you have to reduce them down uh, to uh, to a length of one. So you can either do that as you go along, or just when you're going to use them as a basis. But that is something that I ran into problems with. Um, can you explain cross and dot product real quick? You betcha. The cross product, and this time we can go back to GeoGebra. The cross product between two vectors, so this is a vector, this is a vector, is the is the is the is the vector that is perpendicular to both of them in three dimensions. So this line here is perpendicular to AB, and it is also perpendicular to AC. Uh, there are two vectors that have that property. Um, the cosine of the angle is the dot product. The cross product is a, it yields, takes two vectors and yields a new vector that is perpendicular to both. This has a right angle, but it's not matrix multiplication. Um, no, no, no. Uh, we're not trying to, I, yeah, we did try yesterday to rotate the, um, the, uh, these things so they, they end up in the XY plane. So we can look at them like this sort of, like, you know, like this, I guess, if we're looking at John. That is not today's plan of action. Today's plan of action is to watch things spin like this because it's so cool. No. Um, today's plan is we're going to leave them where they are and use cross products to see if we can just solve the problem without rotating the sphere. Um, so we're not, yes, we're not multiplying matrices today. We're going to leave them where they are and, and see if we can get that to work. And I'm pretty sure we can, actually, because I kind of skimmed it earlier. Okay. Um, okay. So now, uh, if we just wanted to solve how far along the uh, route you are, uh, we, we, we're done. We could, because it's going to be like V1 times cosine theta plus V2 times sine theta. And that is actually something we've seen before. This is a very simple sort of issue. Um, so cross is perpendicular. I need to look at the equation. Okay, sure. I can do that for you. Uh, hang on. One weirdness about unmounting and mounting drives is you lose. Okay, so here, uh, we're going to let, I guess we're starting to call these things A, B, and C. I guess I'm going to be consistent. So if you have AX, AY, and AZ, B will be BX, BY, BZ. And then we're going to say cross AB. And it's not a difficult formula. It's this formula. Um, that's okay. I'm always so confused by these little things. Okay. This is the cross product. Now, I <laughs> need to study math. Um, it's not that difficult. And actually, if you think about it, the only thing you need to do to solve this, uh, even if you didn't know what it was, you need to find a vector that is perpendicular to A and B, which means the dot product with A and B is zero. So, let's, let's look at cross AB dot A simplified, because this thing is stupid, is 0, cross B, also 0, because it is a vector that's perpendicular to both. 
So even if you didn't know what it was, you could f you know you could write out the equations and solve it. Um, so so that's what it is. Yeah. Um, now it turns out there's multiple vectors that are perpendicular to, to a and b to any two vectors. Um, the cross product length is it, it, I'm not I'm going to say it once and I'm not going to care about it is the area of the parallelogram formed by a and b. Um, the only other question here is um, which direction should the cross product point? Uh, well, the cross product of A and B points the opposite direction of the cross product of B and A. They're not symmetric. Um, but we find that the cross product, the one that we choose, is chosen by, I think even you, you know, I'll give you like, what do you think, how do you think we choose between the two vectors that could be A cross B? You have, uh, you have 10 seconds to answer. You have seven seconds to answer. Except the string's probably on a delay, so you don't really have that much time. Okay, no. It's chosen by the right-hand rule. So we choose it so that if you're moving your right hand from A to B, the, um, the uh, you know, your thumb is going to point towards the cross product. Uh, B to A, of course, is going the other direction. It still point towards your, uh, your thumb. So that's, that's, how we, that's how we decide where the cross product will be. Okay, so far we've not done anything more interesting than what we've already looked at. I think, in fact, I have it up probably, so I never close anything. Right now we've just done this. Uh, not very exciting. And I think it's... No, not that. Not that. Not that. Maybe that. Um... um Getting caught. I'm just going to clean up a little bit here, but um, oh, there's stuff to the left too. Oh, that's me. Okay. Um, we're basically doing this stuff. We found the perpendicular vector, and then we're just you know finding the run perpendicular to the perpendicular. So what is left hand and right hand? No, no, no. It's always right hand. So okay, using your right hand now. This is for everybody who's listening. Probably just you. Um, point your hand to the x-axis right hand to the x-axis and then slowly move your fingers to the y-axis and notice what direction your thumb is pointing. So tell me what direction your thumb is pointing. X cross Y is in which direction? They're both, they're both right hand rules. Good. Now start off at point B and go to point A but still in the way your fingers would curl around it. So you kind of have to turn your hand upside down to do that. Unless you're like weird. So if you were to roll, you know, like grab from y to x, yes. <laughs> we see this way too often, is that every time someone says right hand rule, someone has to do that little thing with their hand. Uh, but now if you're going from y to x, y cross x, you'll notice that your thumb is pointing downwards. So x cross y is positive z, y cross x is negative z. Uh, and that's, that's some people do use the left hand rule. I think graphic artists prefer the left hand rule because they want, um, their definition of Y is different also. Their definition of Y is going down the screen, not up as we would have in mathematics. So, you know. Um, but here we're going to use the right hand rule. We don't have a, an ambiguity here. Okay. So, um, so okay, we have, this, we have this vector. And so far what we've done is again just parameterize the great circle between, uh, between A and B. Here's where we introduce point C. Um, now, if we, the vector V1 is pointing perpendicular, and we know there's a point C out there, which we don't know much about, um, what happens if we take the cross product between V1 and C, and call it, I think we're up to V3 now, what is true about that cross product? Well, it's perpendicular to V1, which is the vector that's perpendicular to the plane. Um, so it has to be, the, the, per the perpendicular vector has to be in the inside of the plane. It has to be in the plane that A and B have. Um, unfortunately, it is not parallel to C, it is perpendicular to C. Uh, because it's a cross product, so it has to be perpendicular to C and to V1. So how do we get it to be from perpendicular to be parallel? 
Well, we can use an other cross product. So now we want the vector that is um, perpendicular to V3 and to, uh, let's see, V3. And it still has to be perpendicular to V1 because it, we want to keep it in the plane. And so V4 will point to where the distance between C and the arc between AB is minimal, I think. Um, so I think that that is one way to do it without having to go through uh, translations and transformations. Now, one, one problem with the, all of this here is um, uh, we're going to get, I'm going to go ahead and try to put it in mathematics, but the problem is the formulas are going to get pretty complicated, and they're going to get really complicated when I have to start taking uh, norms or normalizations of these, because uh, uh, the cross pr this is the cross product, but if you want the cross product, uh, the norm of the cross product, that is not as simple. In fact, I don't know if there is a simple formula for the norm of the cross product. I think they're just going to, yeah, it's just going to be, you know, the obvious norm for that. It's not simple. Uh, and then that, that's where we get into our square roots and absolute values and all that crazy stuff we got into yesterday, which we're going to avoid today. We're going to go real simple here, see how far this gets us without even doing, uh, you know, normal vectors yet. So let's go ahead and we will define A as being AX, AY, AZ. Uh, B as being BX, BY, BZ. And now I'm tempted to just say, can we make these? Oy vey. And the problem is, of course, A and B are given in spherical coordinates, not in, uh, not in. Yep, this is going to this is going to lead us right down the frickin' rabbit hole. Theta A phi A, and of course one, and spherical to, to x y z of theta B phi B, and one, and vector C will be spherical to x y z theta C, T H C man, P H C and one feces and one okay so these will be our three vectors um that's just the yeah the norm of a vector is its length um the problem is it has such a hideous formula um that once you start getting norms involved and this is no offense to Norm peterson on of cheers or anybody else named norm um the the, the math gets ugly of course, even converting from spherical to XYZ coordinates makes the math a little ugly. We're already sort of doing what we didn't want to do. Okay. Um, to get V1. Okay, so we're going to cross A and B to get um, something that's perpendicular to both, which is, um, I'm going to throw in a simplify here. And then we're going to cross, um, then when we get the vector that's in the plane that's perpendicular to A, uh, but not necessarily to B, obviously. So we're going to cross V1 and V, oops, cross A and V1 to get V2. And we'll do a simplify there. And don't worry, I'm going to very adamantly stay out of this rabbit hole this time, or try to. Um, so let's see, V1, V2. Now we want to call uh, V cross V1 and C. Call it V3. Okay. And finally, we want to cross V3 and V1 and call it V4. Now, I hope that none of this requires normalization because wh what we have here is this final vector is going to be in the plane of A and B and it's going to be pointing in the direction where T has the minimum distance from A and B, God willing. Um, but even if it doesn't, we can get around this. So let's put these in it all at once. They're not very interesting. Okay, and now we're going to start being interesting by saying, what is V1 going to look like? Cool. That's, that's interesting. All right, let's try that again. Um, let's just see if this all went through. A. Oh, I need to pull in my library. Interesting, I don't believe it though. I suspect black magic. <laughs> of course. That's how all math works. We are all, we are all black magicians. Um, okay, so A, good, B, good, C, good. Okay. Now V1 is going to be the cross between, uh, this is the one that's perpendicular to both not necessarily of length one, already getting kind of ugly. 
V2 is the one that is um, in the plane and is perpendicular to A but not to B. Oh, already it's unhappy. It's motherfucker. That is some ugly looking shit. And then we want the one that is perpendicular to both C and V1, and it is in the plane, but it's not perpendicular to, uh, yeah. It's, it's not, it doesn't, this is the vector that's in the plane that's perpendicular to where C is. It's the, uh, it's the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, when you take a vector and you transmute it down to a base, when you fold it down to a base. And then finally, we have the vector we actually want. Oh, and I probably should have put a cross product th there. Yeah, we don't just want the vectors, we want this. Okay. Oh, it's always bad when it takes time to think. Um, I actually wanted to read a book about math card tricks, but it was too boring and had too little math. Is a base, a basis vector, uh, right, the, the basis vectors in normal three space are 1, 0, 0, the x-axis, pointing towards the x-axis, 0, 1, 0, pointing to the y-axis, and 0, 0, 1, pointing to the z-axis. Those are our bases. What's, whoa, Bible thump. What the hell? Okay. And I'm beginning to see why there might never be a simple formula for this. Um, okay. But all of that, um, why the Bible thump, dude? Um, because I'm talking about, bla oh, black magic, yes, of course. Uh, but you know, hey, we're mathematicians, we don't believe in God anyway. That was a statement for all mathematicians. Um, no, you're not too stupid. If you want, I can help you with math. I can even do it right here on stream because the, the sort of ultimate rule of the stream is not to be useful to anyone. So if I stop what I'm doing, start helping you, it'll be helpful to you, but that doesn't really count. Uh, it'll really annoy the people who are watching it and hoping to get something out of it. So if you want some help, let me know. I can, we can, we can go right, right to helping you. And with Discord, we can even get you right on the stream, I think. Um, I mean, I, I can hear you in audio, and there should be a way to get you on the stream also, but, uh, but that's dangerous. Um, wanted in own Hogwarts, but they didn't... Now, you gotta run right at the column, dude. If you wanna apply it for ho Hogwarts, you don't send them a letter. You run right for column six and three-fourths or whatever, and just, you know, if they want you, they'll let you through. If they don't want you, you bash your head in. Either way, it's all good. So now, what I'm gonna pull out of my hat that makes all of this somewhat useful, and what I'm gonna pull out of my hat here is... Oh, crap. Have I already pulled it out of my hat? Hang on. Um, oh yeah, I have. <laughs> it's this thing, the waypoints thing that we're talking about earlier. Um, nah, all good. I'm fine. Okay, good. Uh, but kids, if you're out there, remember, run straight for that column, hard as you can. Uh, also look directly at the sun and try drugs, you know, because you want to kind of get used to them by the time you're an adult. Okay. That's all my good advice for today. Okay. Um, so I was, so I guess I was somewhere here trying to figure out what I was doing. And I thought I was going to add a new function. Um, all right, but I put this all into script.js. And uh, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and reload because they really want me to. And so now we're going to jump way back to a totally different problem. Uh, but one that we were actually solving earlier. Okay. So what we want to do here is, these are two FAA locations. Um, we can figure out where they are because they're coming from a file uh, called, uh, oh right, stations.js, which we created, which has a list of all the FAA stations, the important information about them. Uh, let's take a quick look at it. It's very long, so I don't like looking at it, but here it is. So it tells you the facility name, the latitude, uh, the longitude, the no NOTAM facility ID, the ICO identifier where it exists. Uh, but the, this thing here, the, um, the key I'm using, I, I did confirm, is unique. It, uh, each station has only one of them. Okay? So the first thing this guy wanted to know is, you know, let's find our waypoints and then, um, then tell me what is closest to these waypoints. So, and again, we're writing this in sort of a script.js. I should put a thing up. Oh, yeah, I did. 
to do functionalize this. We need to put this all into functions at some point. Okay, so we basically, what we did is we first found the, um, the, we first converted the vectors, the A and B to spherical coordinates. Oh, and right, because spherical coordinates actually returns yeah, uh, my 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 functions return more than what they what maybe you want. So AV2 and BV2 extract out the vector portion of what spherical XYZ returns. Th this is the actual coordinates, and I'm beginning to wonder if I should have maybe not done that. Um, but anyway, uh, there is a cross product for math. I'm surprised math doesn't have its like a spherical to XYZ. It does. And it might be better than mine. Let's find out. Uh oh, console's ha unhappy. That spherical XYZ is not a function. Okay. A couple of things going on here that I'm going to try. I'm going to go over to math.js and see um, uh, construction functions that you construct things. That's not what I'm looking for. Expressions, derivative. Damn. It's pretty deep shit. Uh, absolute value, floor, bitwise functions. Let's look at vector functions, combinatoric functions, complex functions, geometry functions, matrix functions. So there's got to be vector functions in here somewhere, right? Probability. This is good shit. Um, I might... Permutations, random, relational functions, set functions. Come on, you gotta have vector functions in here somewhere. Special functions. <laughs> That's actually a statistical function, but whatever. More statistics functions, string, trig, unit functions, utility functions. So no, let's just see if the word vector shows up anywhere in here. Here we go. Solves the linear equation. Okay, so that's a, that's a solution for a vector equation. Calculate the norm of something, including a vector. Uh, for, okay, three-dimensional cross product. The diagonal matrix, that's just, okay, that's not hard. Uh, dot product, okay, good. The Kronecker product, I don't know what that is. Okay, so there's a lot of, uh, a lot of good stuff in there. But X, Y, Z, so I'm going to make a note to myself here. If I haven't already... Uh, I might contribute to math.js. I sort of like it, and it's it's really pulling in some of the functions I like. And I might be able to help out by putting in some other functions, or at least getting involved in the, that discussion. Uh, but for right now, let's go back to here. Okay, so we have math cross a b console log c. And am I running out of? Oh yeah 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 yeah. This is, uh, I'm in a small VM and a small browser, and the replit isn't even great about using up space. So let's go ahead and run this now. Okay, awesome. The problem with this, by the way, is that it is not normalized. It is not of length one. Um, wait, so do I care? Uh, no, actually, I may, maybe don't care yet. I will in just a minute. Um, vector perpendicular to plane of A and B. Kay. Now we want to find the vector that is in the plane. Um, we'll call this um, the perp vector. And to get that, we need to cross Z with it. Oh, we're actually going to be careful here. We've got to cross AV2 with Z in that order because I want my points to go clockwise. Okay. Um, let's see what the perp vector looks like. Yeah, that is definitely not, I shouldn't say that. Um, okay. Well, I mean, if I would say, you know, console log, the norm of perp, I, I don't think it's one, though. I think this is where I had problems last time. I assumed the norm was one. Uh, and it's not, so you can't use it like a basis vector. And it's not. The norm is this weird thing. So let me see if I can do this. Um, I don't know if JavaScript's going to allow me to take uh, a vector and divide it by the num a number. Uh, 
Um. Okay. Okay. Let me just print out perp maybe. Unless I, I maybe it's not going to let me do this. Yeah. Okay. What if I just want to divide perp? You freak by the number two. Can I do that? Nope. Doesn't like that. Okay, so there is no division function divided on, on perp. Um, now, because perp is a, it's, it's really a three-dimensional array, it's an array with three entries in it, so we can use map. Um, and what we want to do is take each element and divide it by the math norm of perp. Boy, this should be fun. Let's see if that, let's see if that does anything. Parentheses around the arrow function may help. Oh, yeah. Now, this is really how JavaScripters program. They hate the concept of the word function. So they just say x is the argument, and you take it and you do this to it if this works. Parentheses around the arrow. Well, wait a minute. Am I off by a parentheses here? I might be. There. Invalid arrow function arguments. Parentheses around the arrow. Do we need a return value out of this sucker? I, don't, I shouldn't, right? Um... Well, if you know how to draw arrow functions, tell me about it. If not, we're going to go Google. My friend Google will tell me. Um, I mean, I could, of course, write this out as a proper uh, function. Um, but let's see. Arrow functions in JavaScript, which I think is the only language that really has them. And, okay, blah, 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 blah. Oh, you need parentheses around the arguments. Oh, okay, I've got it backwards. Sorry. Parentheses around the arguments and braces around the definition, the body. Java, making your life simpler since never. Okay, now let's see what this does. Yeah. Now the question is, do we actually have a norm function? Um... Because, you know, we should. But we might not. So let's see what that does. Oh, we do have one. Okay. The only thing I'm thinking here is you, we might be trying to change something at the same time as we're measuring it. So, perp norm. This is just getting ugly now. And then we're going to take perp and divide each element by perp norm, which is a lot less exciting. And then we're going to see what happens to perp. Any thoughts from the peanut gallery? confirm that perp is an array, but it is. It is an array. Yeah, it's an array of three elements. I can frickin' map stuff to it. I'm getting annoyed. Uh, okay. Can I map this to the function that takes x to x over 2? You know, if you're not going to be, not going to help me out here, let's see what we do. No. What if we multiply x by 2? No. Maybe if we return... I didn't think you needed returns in this, but okay. Aha! So that was the, the mistake there. Um, so let's go all the way back to the beginning. Uh, perp is we're going to uh, divide every element by uh, norm perp, so we will get a unit vector. I don't know if that's a, a unit vector, but we could certainly take its norm. It looks like a unit vector, though.
Ta-da! It is a unit vector. Okay, fantastic. So now how does this help us? Well, um... Um, now if we can use, um... We can use, like, Z times... Nope, not, not Z, sorry, perp. Nope, still not. AV... 2 times sine of theta plus perp times, still wrong, cosine of theta, plus perp times cosine of theta, st nope, still wrong, sine of theta, to basically draw out the great circle. Now before we do that, we need to know where to stop, though, because uh, A and, well, you know, let's actually print out the whole great circle. Uh, I think dividing by its norm should be length 1. Yeah, it is. For, fortunately, that worked out for us. Um, so let's do this here. Let's see. See, now I'm tempted, and this is exactly where uh, we're going to just die here. We don't actually need... Oh, we do need the z-vector. Sorry, we do need the z-vector for later, so we will preserve it. So now... Um, let's... Is it math pi? It's math pi. They capitalize it. Um, let's look at 20 points along the great circle. This is not going to be between A and B. It's going to go beyond B. But, you know, let's go ahead and look at them. Um, this is probably redefinition, which is ugly, but let me try it anyway. Um, let's see. That will be AV2. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Can I do this? Can I multiply vectors by by constants? Flip. Um, yeah, I think we tried this and it didn't work. Hang on. This belongs up here. Undo. Undo. Control C. Oh, I meant to do Control X. Okay, but that's fine. Okay. Um, can we? Oh man. I don't think we can actually. Oh, actually, maybe. Let's see what this does. No. Wait. Where's my second console log? Is it way down here? Yeah. Okay. So we just want to log this. No, you cannot multiply a vector by a constant. Um, unsure might be an array, not a matrix, and I think not. Um, I'm going to Google this real quick, but I think it's we'll just have to map it to every element of the array. JavaScript multiply array by number. Come on, all right. How do I multiply in a scalar? Yeah. Multiply every, yeah, this is, so this is a problem people have looked at before, and it might be that you just have to map. Um, oh, I mean, he, he uses a fucking for loop. Um, Um, without iterating over the array, you will always be iterating over the array. Yeah, so it looks like, no, it looks like you actually have to do the, the map. That there's not a simpler, there's not a shortcut to that. Um, okay, so we will have to do it the hardish way. Okay. So, um, px, the point at x, equal, um, nope, I'm wrong. So, let's see, we have AV and purple, AV2 and purple are vectors. Um, yeah. Yes, think about it, you noob, which makes science from a programming point of view, which makes sense from a programming point of view. It doesn't to me, because I've seen languages where you, where that is defined, I think even in in Mathematica and Mathics that is defined. 
that you can multiply each element. It, it, it tries to c understand what you're doing, and that the most reasonable um, interpretation is that you're trying to do that to every element of the array. So now I'm a little bit happy. Nope, sorry, unhappy. I can't even say that. I'm a little bit unhappy because this spherical XYZ function, um, you know, it's okay that it takes these values as input. It would be nice if it returned, uh, as, at least as one of the damn things it returned, uh, a pure array instead of having to, like, suck out X, Y, and Z. So let's go ahead and change our, uh, our function. It'd be nice if I push these changes back to, um, back to git at some point, but I, I don't. I, I, I mean, I will. Okay. And then... Ooh. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not sure this isn't going to work, but, um... Ha-ha! <laughs> we'll set the value ARR to being just the values of XYZ we just computed. I'm 99% sure this is going to break. Uh, I think it did break because it didn't output anything. Um... You have a chunk of memory, but what should a chunk of memory... Well, no, that's that's different now. That would be like multiplying pointers. I'm talking about multiplying arrays. It's different. Um, and yes, I realize the way C models arrays is it models it as a pointer to, to something, and then every time in the array you just increment the pointer because each element of the array takes an equal number of bytes. But that's an implementation issue. An array fundamentally is a list of numbers, or a list of something. Sorry. Okay, let me see if this is going to work. I, I can't imagine that it will. X is not defined. So what if I say this X? Like I guess it doesn't... <laughs> doesn't... Y is not defined. Let me get rid of this completely briefly to see if I've, I've actually... Um, so if we're not getting output, that means something is going wrong here. But let's make sure we're actually getting output. Oh, fuck. We've gotten rid of our output. Hang on. Stand by. Stand by. Stand by. Let's just over here do a real quick console log um, AV. And what we want. Um, okay, that's fine. Um... It is a pointer to the first element. It's not even a list. An array is not a list. In C, it is not modeled as a list. Uh, but it is a frickin' list in real life. C is, like, really stupid, though. I mean, I realize it's a fast language. A lot of people use it. Even I have to use it sometimes. Um, but it's really... Uh, I mean, be careful not to confuse. And I think there's a winky face there, so I think you get it. But... Uh, yeah, don't, don't confuse a language's implementation of a data structure with the data structure itself. Um, an array, since the beginning of frickin' time, is very much like a set, but you allow duplicate elements. Um, and you can implement it in lots of different ways. Um, and you can even have infinite arrays. Like, the uh, in Mathematica, the prime array is technically infinite. You could put prime of anything, and it'll try to spit it out. Um, Okay, sorry. Okay, if this works, I would be like really happy. Okay, spherical to Z, X, Y, Z. Which direction? I'm looking in this direction. I mean, we'll do it for both of them, but. First of all, let's make sure this doesn't break anything. Okay, now. Now let's F with this. Literally this, the keyword this. That's what this does. Undefined, undefined, undefined. Okay, can't quite get there from here. Um, an array is not a list. I disagree. Ooh, ooh. Char x10, char star pointer equals x0. Well, now, wait a minute. A string is not an array. 
It doesn't matter anyway, yeah. I mean, a string can be treated as an array of characters, but it's, it's not. A string is a string. Um, again, this is the difference between data structures and how they're implemented, but it's not an interesting argument because um, I don't care. And literally, that's why it's not interesting. Okay, so let's see if we can do this uh, here. Um, let's just define the array to be this goddamn thing, and I'm going to fix it in just a sec. So this will be the freaking array. And no, 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 what the hell? Okay, I'm gonna have it auto clean up, which never works. But it does take some time, so that's kind of nice. It freezes the screen nicely. Well, that actually kind of worked. Okay, and then here, x can be array 0, y can be array 1, z can be array 2, and array can be the array. Everybody happy? Now let's see what happens. X, there it is! G gorgeous. Um, okay, I guess a string can be a constant char star. Yeah, but again, that's an implementation. A string, just forget about C, a string is just like a bunch of, you know, it's like a word or a, or a book or something. I don't care. I just really, this is not, I mean, I would argue you to death on some points, but this is not one of them. Okay, so let's see. We, this is good. This is good. Um, I'm going to download this as a zip file because I, I like to pretend that I will um, merge these changes into bclib, um, you know, or bclib staging, I guess. And then let's go ahead and do the same thing with XYZ to, um, let's see, R, theta, K. Once again, we will say let AR equal, it's going to be in the order R. What? No, no, theta phi R, god damn it. I guess it doesn't matter because this is an object, but when I put it into a freaking array, it's going to be in theta phi r order, the way God intended. Wait. Oh, yeah, 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 this. Uh, yeah, right, the arc tangent over the square root, and then finally... Um, this guy, which I realize I'm missing a letter, so I'll just do this, that. Okay, um, so this is our, I really hope I didn't mess this up when I'm doing this, because that would be funny if it stops working. <laughs> Not funny, but funny. Um, return R is going to be, nope, we're not going to do that. Theta is going to be R0. Phi is going to be R1. R is going to be har har, r r, 2. And the array that I'm going to return is the array that I'm going to return. Okay, everybody happy? This at least test that I didn't break syntax on something. Okay, good. Um, board. Had job interview today for a postdoc position. It's 50% payment and 100% work. Why, why, just why academia is interesting. Yes, 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 it is, uh, it is, uh, lots of free work. Which I'm on the other side of, so I appreciate it. Okay. Now let's go back to our script.js. And so now we should be able to say, um, um, Okay, we're not going to go quite to the extent of saying, can we put the... Um, oh, actually, we don't even have this. As, okay, so now we can say let av equals this dot arr. Let bv equals this dot arr. Um, and I'm going to be consistent here. Can we put this all on one line? I love putting things on one line. No, we cannot. Um, and now I feel if we're going to do this, we really should do like this. Um... 
end parentheses ARR. And then console log AV BV. And by the way, we're going to run some problems here because we're going to try to get values that don't exist now. Um, okay. So that was... That was not groovy. I think it's because we're trying to calculate values that can't exist anymore. Um, and we'll fix this in a sec. And I think this empty for loop is okay. We don't have any console logging going on below that. So let's see what this does. Ta-da! Okay, so now we have uh, nice how you put it. Should have asked you yesterday, would have told them that. Um, oh, I keep forgetting my message is not going to show up there because I'm talking. Ooh, shiny. Um, yeah, um, we do benefit from that. So, And then later, of course, in life, you know, if you become a professor, you can benefit from that too. Uh, if you don't become a professor, you're just wasting your life away, giving away your free time to somebody for cheap. Uh, we would we would enslave graduate students if we could, but it turns out that uh, 18th Amendment prohibits us from doing that. Uh, so sadly, we can't. Okay. So these are the uh, these are the uh, these are the uh, these are these are the arrays that represent X Y Z positions of these guys. So we don't need to do this now, and now we can get the vector that's perpendicular to the plane of A and B. I'm calling it z, which is probably not a great idea, because it is not the z vector. Let's just call it, um, plane perp. And this time it's just going to be the cross product of this and this. And then, did I have a name for this? I guess I didn't. Um, and vector in plane perp to a. So that will call it, oh god. perp two plane, perpendicular two plane, and then perp in plane equals um, cross of perp two, let's see, hang on, um, AV cross the thing that is perpendicular to the plane because I want to create, yes, I want to create a right-handed system. Uh, so this would be perp two plane. Code's looking a little bit better now. Um, and then I need to do a division. Let's see. Feels bad, man. Eh, well, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. You probably put in an icon that says feels bad, man, but it shows up as feels bad, man to, to me. I don't know. I, don't, I guess I don't have that in mode or whatever magic I need I don't have for that. Okay. All right. So now we need to uh, actually take perp in plane normalized. Uh, and we've learned that we can't divide vectors. Um, I mean, you can. Perp in plane unit vector. This is really ugly. I really don't like this. But okay. Goes to x over math, no one perp and plane. End of function. Um, end of map. That should be it, right? BV2 is not defined. Damn straight it's not defined. Oh. There. Ta-da! And now finally, we're, we're actually going somewhere with this, believe it or not. Um, let's see. It is good. It, if it doesn't have norm 1, I've done something terribly wrong, but I, I think it will.
Well, this thing doesn't crash easy. I mean, it crashes pretty heavily. Well, maybe we better look to see what the hell this is. Alright, well, maybe we better see what the hell, um, Perp and Plane is. Maybe we don't even have that right. Okay, no, we nailed that one. I mean, the only thing I'm a little bit suspicious about here is, um, I'm, I'm using the thing that I'm trying, I'm reassigning, oh, I'm not even doing that, am I? No, no, this is good. Oh, wait, I'm using norm perp in plane while using plane, but that's not, that should not be an issue. So let's actually add a console log of x and math norm perp in plane. And if you say perp in plane long enough, it sounds pretty good. All right, let's see what this does. Well, it creates a syntax. Oh, right, because I need to finish off my console log. Yeah, might be useful if I actually, you know, figure it out. So this will be alpha, and we will put on the other side of it, also alpha. So this will be the alpha bounded uh, comment, which I could have done better. Okay, so this, this is x um, 43 is the norm of the what? that just sounds wrong okay well I find that hard to believe, but I mean, 43 is a very large, unless this is a very small angle, which I don't think it is. Um, oh, I know what's wrong with my function, by the way. Uh, it is 43. Well, let's see. I know what's wrong with my function, though. Same mistake I made earlier. Uh, I forgot to do a return. You can't just... Uh, you can't just compute it. You actually have to say return. So let's get rid of that. X goes to X over math. We want to return X goes to that. And so now, all things are good. There we go. And I guess I can now take its norm. Which should be 1. Oh, no, actually I made a unit, don't I? We just changed it, and, uh... Ta-da! So what use is this, you might ask? Well, I'll tell you. Um... Now... Uh, so this value of i is going to be theta here. Um... We can multiply, holy crap. We can multiply AV times cosine theta, but in order to do that, we have to like serious motherfucker here. Where is Barry Discord? I want to paste some dick pics. See? See? <laughs> they also asked you in the job interview where, um, where I post, where my Discord is. I'm assuming they actually, when I pulled it out, uh, the, whose dick pics are going to be posting in my Discord? You know, I mean, always these silly, oh, in, yeah, in order of the last statement is returned. A lot of languages have that uh, concept, Ruby does too, 
where if you don't return anything from a function explicitly, whatever the last value evaluated is gets returned. JavaScript apparently does not do that. Um, said it looked bigger in the picture. So you went to a job interview and they said your penis looked bigger in the picture than it did in real life. Uh, and you should explain about photoshopping and, you know, uh, zoom lenses and, uh, and all that stuff. And, you know, also explain to them that, you know, you could lie about this. You could say that you were, you know, you took that at a job interview where you were more excited than for this job interview. So that kind of gives them a little bit of hint. If they want to hire you, you know, they need to give you a salary that makes your penis bigger. Okay. So the problem here we're having is um, it's very ugly to multiply these... Uh, multiply vectors in, in JavaScript. In fact, to the point that I'm wondering if this thing maybe has a special function to do it. Multiply two matrices element-wise. Okay, that's nice. Not what I want. Multiply two or more values. No, not quite. Multiply. Oh, that's it. Nope, there's no way to multiply or divide a, a vector by a certain amount. Uh, no, I got a present from a Vietnamese friend who wants to post a picture. Uh, dude, you have so good ideas, I could not in 10 years come up with that. Yeah, you know, it's all about the peen, man. Um, if you're a woman, which you don't appear to be, um, you know, then it's all about the uh, suggest that you will do sexual favors, but don't promise anything which you couldn't anyway, because it'd be illegal uh, in most countries. Um, and then, you know, you get the job, and then just, if they try to fire you, sexual harassment. I probably offended some people with that joke, but it is just a joke. If you are offended, uh, well, you are. I mean, I can't do anything about it. All right. All right. So we want to multiply AF by the sine of I, uh, by the cosine of I. And I guess... You can add fucking... Uh, arrays, right, in JavaScript? I mean, if you can't add them, I'm going to be really fucking pissed. So I better get four fucking seven, nine out of this. Five. <whistles> what? Wait. That was totally unexpected. That, that, that was weird. And then I guess we'll do after. I, maybe it's dying right there and it's not printing anything. So this should stay before, after. Oh, fuck. This part of it is actually parentheses. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? I can't add... Okay, hang on. This is why people hate JavaScript, apparently. Apparently you can't just do that with a... Uh, no, concat's not what I want. That's what it's doing. <sighs> Element... Add elements of two arrays. Nope, apparently you can't do that either here. Um, yes, I think it's politically correct, but it's a real danger, I think. Politically incorrect, yes. Yep, if um, later I run for president or something and someone says, Hey, you said some bad stuff about women saying that they should, you know, do this. And I'll be like, remember the other guy? I'm still not as bad as him. And how women voted for him? Stupid bitches. That was offensive. Um, okay. So apparently you can't do this either. So now it is time uh, to fuck with things and... Um, okay. I need to add another function. I'm going to add functions that let you multiply a vector by a constant and um, 
and let you add two vectors. I mean, that seems like a really reasonable thing to be doing. I'm going to try to keep them simple, because it's not really hard to do this, but okay. Given an object with a vector v and a constant c, return the vector res that is c times v. And I'm going to regret not putting, giving a list of the variables here. Okay, so function, vector multiply, takes an object, um, and I guess vector v can be of any dimension, it's, we're not going to do that. So um, object v, uh, map the function that takes x to the return of x times object c um, and that's the new vector and we don't want to return it quite raw so we want to say return uh, res result as this. So if that works, I'll be very happy. If it doesn't, also, I should, if I could spell multiply correctly. Um, we should keep it family friendly. It's an educational stream. Uh, by the way, YouTube has the thing where you have to mark whether your content is for uh, fucking little children or not. Uh, my content is not for fucking little children. And I don't mean, you know, for pedophilia. It's not for that either. But it is not for little children. It is not for children. Uh, I you know, do not fucking do that censorship kappa shit to me. Um, if you're a child and you're watching this, uh, you know, I, I, I don't mind, but I mean, um, it's not designed for you, and I will kappa the fuck out of you. I don't even know what that means. But I should m have mentioned, like, oh, it's 50% I want to enroll for math bachelors, though that might be a bit silly to say that. Well, yeah, I just hate, I hate children and I hate kappa, so I hate things that protect children, pres presumably protect children. It's a form of censorship. It should be banned. Uh, all right, I'm done. Um, well, I mean, at a job interview, you have to be careful. You have to make it seem like you want the job and you'll do a good job at the job. Uh, but at the same time, if they're sort of, uh, you know, uh, I if you think you're not have a good chance of getting it, but you think you need to push them a little bit, you could say, you know, you've got other options open or you need to know. Be polite about it. I mean, you know, as polite as Germans can be. Um, be polite about it. But, um, uh, but you know, be polite about it. But, uh, you know, don't um, do let them know that, you know, um, there are other offers on the table or you have other considerations. But be very careful that they don't start thinking that, you know, if you say I've got this other great offer, they might start thinking, well, then we probably shouldn't give you an offer because all you're going to do is say no to it because uh, you've already got this other great offer. Um, or you know, if you say, I'm going to go get a math, I'm going to get a bachelor's degree in math instead of doing this, they're going to say, well, great, go back to school, get a bachelor's degree. Um, you know, or you have other options, you know, but then again, they're going to say, well, then you don't want to work here if you want to do that. Unless you tell them, uh, I want to be going to school part time to get my math bachelor's degree so that I could, uh, yeah. Oh well, okay. So then that would be that would so that is an option. That is actually technically another offer. Then, uh, if they're giving you money to study math, that would be another offer. If you want to do both, study math and work here, which they might like, because that then to them this is like an employee is uh, you know getting more educated and is working here. Well, the PhD study math again sounds strange. What's your PhD in again? You th you told me once, and I d don't care. Um, you said you had a PhD in something that was like not quite math. Um, computer science, right? You have a PhD in computer science? Or you just submitted your paper for approval in to get a PhD in computer science. Or, uh, you know, computer science. You have a PhD in computer science. So you would be Dr. Fierce Crocodile. See, people don't usually put doctor in front of, uh, in front of people's pseudonyms, but, you know, Dr. Dr. Fierce Crocodile. Uh, oh, you still have to defend, so you don't have your PhD yet. Um, 
if, if, if you can't defend your thesis successfully, you uh, will not get a PhD, right? Now you have a master's, though. Well, you know, I want to say I'm rooting for you, um, but, but, I, but, I, but I'm not really. Um, I just hate everyone, so it's always funnier when people fail. So if you go through all this work, submitted your thesis, and you fail, that would be funny. Of course, I'll probably give you a chance to edit it and you know resubmit it at a later date. It's not too terrible, but it would be like like heart crushing to you, and and that's funny to me. I'm a very terrible person. Um, oh wow, there's other people here, at least pretend people here. Uh, so, if you guys will all join me in a moment of wishing that fierce crocodile does not successfully. Uh, defend his thesis. Uh, maybe the power together, like you know how Peter Pan could bring Tinkerbell back to life, I think. Or no, the audience could bring Tinkerbell back to life through their belief. Um, you know, well, let's put out some um, affirmations out there. Let's just see how powerful we are with our affirmations. Not that making people succeed, because you know that's sort of the yeah, I worked hard on this. My uh, my advisor is a good person. Blah 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 blah. Uh, so I'll succeed. That's that's the normal. We, we should try to do something unusual. We should try to wish that Dr. Fierce Crocodile, not yet Dr. Fierce Crocodile, fails to defend his thesis. Now again, that is a, like a, there's still a chance that's going to happen. So let's also gather together. <coughs> and again, we're testing, we're testing our vibes here. Let's get a vibe to have Fierce Crocodile hit by lightning. Because I mean, if that happens, we know we've been able to do something. So, um, so that's all, like, send out a vibe here to, um, to have Fierce Crocodile hit by lightning, non-fatally, non-fatally, you know, but, but just get jolted by lightning, because that is the kind of thing that couldn't happen by chance. I mean, it could, but it's very low. So, so let's all vibe, let's get that vibe going. And I will continue with that vibe um, as I'm programming. Okay, so we have vector multiply. <coughs> Excuse me. Um... Hopefully I haven't broken anything. Um, go back to over here. And let's see. Console log. Vector multiply. V is one, two, three. No, it is one, two, three. One, two, four. And C, the constant, is 7. Let's see what that gives us back. Nice. And if we just wanted the result value, we could just say res. Oh, <laughs> no, we might want to put that inside the console log. Because you, you can't take the res of console log. That's some pretty good shit there. Um, I am distracted. Oh, let's see. Uh, then I'll get super. P okay. <coughs> then I'll get superpowers. Now, you know, in now we could go for a third affirmation of fierce crocodile will fail his thesis, get hit by lightning, and get superpowers. But I don't want you to get superpowers because then you would fly over here, and even though I got you superpowers, you'd probably come and 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 hurt me. Seven is a prime, of course. You are not distract. You are distracting me, but in a good way. <sighs> and seven is a lucky number to some people, or it's not. I don't care. Okay, good. So we got vector multiply working. One line, baby. Uh, well, kind of. Given an object with vectors v one and v two return as res the vector v3 that is the sum of v1 and v2. There's a slight problem here, and that is what if they're not the same length. And I'm going to handle that problem by ignoring it. Um, I'm going to actually say vectors at because we need two of them. Um, let's see. 
Now, can I? No, I can't quite do that. So what I have to do here is the first vector, I can map over it. And I saw someone else do this, so this is not new to me. And for each element in that vector, return, <coughs> um, no. Um, no, because I, I need I need to, I need to actually use a for loop here. Well, darn it! So I'm already unhappy because I have to use a for loop. Um, v1. So it's going to be the length of v1. If you put in a longer v2, you're not going to get it. If you put in a short, no, shorter v2, you're going to you're going to have problems. Res i equals v1 i plus crap object v1 i plus object v2 i oh so, so it's going too far end of the for loop return the object whose res value is res. This is fun because this is the kind of code people look at and go, what the hell? How can you do that? And of course the first res is referring, is a string really. It's referring to the value of res. The second value is an array. Um, so th this is fun stuff. I'm, uh, you are into Chinese. What? Where do you come up with this stuff? Why am I, how am I into the Chinese? I mean, I do like Chinese food. Don't have a problem with Chinese people. Um, but I don't know where the hell you came up with I am into the Chinese. I think it's from this, you think you found my Quora account that's been banned, uh, but I think maybe you found somebody else's Quora account. But anyway, uh, we're going to go back to testing. Four is a bad number. Yes. It's a perfect square. It's the first non-prime because one is ambiguous. Um... I really can't say much more about that, I'm sorry, I just, I mean, there's only so much I can help you with saying 4 is a bad number. Alright, so now let's see if we can do vectors add. And v1 will be this, and v2 will be, um, 7, 4, no, 3, 4. It was going to be 7, 4, 3, but I decided not to do that. Let's see if this works. I might have. A, I might be off by parentheses here. Um, eight, five, eight. Gorgeous. All right. So we've now created two functions. Be okay. Because okay. Oh, I, you might have been asking, are you into Chinese? So now we have funny character sounds like funny character, and it is good because funny character sounds like funny character. Uh, yeah, I don't read Chinese. Um. I, I barely read English. Um, okay, but we have... This is actually pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and save this. This is actually... We've done something slightly worthwhile, which is we've created functions that make life easier for us. So now... Um, so we're, what we've tried to do this whole time is vector multiply... It's still not great, but... Um, the vector, which is AV and we want to multiply it by the constant that is math sine i that's still pretty ugly but okay that gives us a vector and then the second vector we want, no still cosine, I always get this wrong cosine and then we want to do the same thing, this time we want to multiply it by math sine of uh, i and this next vector is the perpendicular vector Um, oh, actually, we don't we don't call it that anymore. We call it the perp in in plane unit vector. Uh, by the way, AV is a unit vector because it is coming off of uh, you know when we we did we create it from yeah we created using the uh, spherical to XYZ and with a radius of one, so its norm is one. We're okay there, um, and now. Just because I want to, let's console log these suckers. Stop putting a second parenthesis there. Okay.
And I think we don't need to console log these anymore, but we will just comment them out. All right. Uh, okay, good. That's actually good. Except I want the res of this. I don't need to see the rest of it. The res of this. Run. Gorgeous. Now. Now. We create the object whose V1 is this. And whose V2 is this. Why are we doing that? We actually have a reason for once. Um, is that really the end of this console log? It is. Um, something's wrong here, though. Hang on. I need an end to this uh, object. I don't think this is going to compile. I've done something wrong. Fucking hell. That's the second time I thought I did something wrong and it worked. The character for 4 sounds similar to the character for death, which makes it bad. The character for 8 sounds similar to the character for wealth, I believe, which makes it good. So those are some Chinese math facts. If you are uh, uh, losing interest, which you, you should lose interest in this. But if that interests you, you're still in pretty bad shape, dude. Um, and this should really be Math Sinai. <coughs> so why are we creating this object? Because we want to send the damn thing to... Well, let's first format this. I want to see if we can get this into sort of a normal... Oh my fucking god, that's terrible. Hang on. It's not really any better, is it? Okay. But shouldn't this be, like, back here? Oh, cool. Now it actually does what I want. Okay. Because we want to take this and do a vectors add. On this. And get the result out of that. And we'll, we'll probably assign that to let... Uh, point equal this, then console log point. We're actually getting somewhere with this, believe it or not. We're going somewhere with this. Vectors add intermediate values undefined. Hmm? Maybe it's because I, I, I called it some, I'm pretty sure I called it vectors add. Uh, the object has a V1 and a V2. Um, yes, yeah, sorry, I should focus, but I'm eating. Oh, you shouldn't focus at all. Uh, but if you're going to not focus, you know, find some porno, find some entertainment out there. Um, don't Chinese numbers are almost as uninteresting as what I'm doing. So that's all I'm saying. Okay. Why the hell is this unhappy now? V1 res, V2 res, um, res. Uh, vectors add intermediate value is undefined. It's not an intermediate value, it's a fucking object. Piece of shit. Unless this is confusing it. Oh, the book. No, this is supposed to be fucking inside out. I and mean, we saw that the objects came out okay, so let's see what happens when we get here. Maybe I'm making a mistake in vectors add, which is which is fine. Um, but we should not be seeing that intermediate value crap. Oh, actually, it's saying line 32 of script JS. All right.
So this is the uh, oh, yeah. Vectors add as a function, so kind of be nice if we called it like a function. Well, this is cool. Having it hang forever. Uh, we'll wait, but I'm suspicious now. Okay, we'll stop it. Oh! This should not have taken... I mean, that's 6.28. This is 0 0.05. Okay, well, fine. We'll increase it by 0 0.2, but this should not have been causing an issue. This is not that hard. Oh, I guess I need to reload this page because I stopped it. Jesus Christ. Uh, nah. Okay, um... I have been streaming, oh my god, for two hours? Seriously? How do I waste that much time? My life is so worthless. Alright, but I'm going to continue for a little while longer. We're probably going to kill it in about half an hour. Uh, just in case anyone cares. Alright, so now we're going to do the... Oh no, it's still, it's still, it's still loading. Stay on page. Oh good, I have I plus zero. That's exactly the value to fix it. So I plus a quarter, I guess. Um, I don't see I don't see why this is giving us such a such a hard time. This should run pretty quickly. These are not hard operate. Oh my God, we'll wait. But these are not hard operations unless I'm really missing something here. And I guess one weird thing is, I guess it's going to wait until to console load all of this crap, because really I should be getting points spitting out every every iteration of I, which is clearly not happening. All right, I'm going to stop. No, I'm going to wait, but then I'm going to stop it from here, oh, which doesn't seem to work. Yes, need to study Chinese. Maybe I start reading a new statistics book. Unsure. There's just too much to learn out there. That is true. There is too much to learn out there. What the hell? Okay. The only thing I'm thinking of is somehow this loop is not doing what I want. Um, so I just did a reload. And I guess I could console log I. when it's ready. It's not done reloading yet. So I think what you should do, Fierce Crocodile, and I, and I recommend this to everyone, um, is to work on my projects for free. So, you know, don't worry about school or work or whatever. Just pour yourself into helping me. And uh, then when I'm done, you know, I will not share the wealth. But of course, these are free projects. But even if they weren't, I wouldn't share the wealth. And then you could feel, uh, do you read books? I used to read books because that was the only way to get information back in the day. Now, now I, I don't read as many books now. Um, let's see, are we back? No, we're still not back. Okay, here we go. Nope, still not getting there. Yep. Let me see if my main system is doing something terrible. It doesn't seem to be. Um, it's actually a good idea, but you were quite far. Okay, so you're saying that the primary reason, and I don't think I can figure out the solution so quickly. Well, th th there's a variety of projects. There's not just one project. Um, so, you know, you could work on something that's your speed. Uh, so you're saying the primary problem with you working for free, for me, with no benefit in sight, is the distance. I mean, that would not be my key concern. If it is your key concern... Okay, geez, I'm going to do a shift reload now. Because that's always better. So X out the reload. Oh, come on. Where's my shift reload? All right, shift control R. Go in there. Let me see what the uptime is on the pseudo machine. Something is, like, it's unhappy about something. Well, it doesn't look that bad.
Okay, Firefox is sucking up some time, but I mean, that's you'd expect that because it's the one that's trying to... Do I finally have it? New. No. Alrighty. And here's where we do something stupid. We actually close that page, go over to a useless page like this one, go back to Replit, and I'm going to reload it in as a... Um, hey, Barry Carter, that's not helpful. Let's look at my Replits. Okay, why is this being really slow? Twitch waypoints. Um, and I don't, okay. Should I read probability theory, the logic of science, Firefox can really suck? Was this H, that was just regular top. There's also A top that I use sometimes, N top for network. And I didn't know about H top, but I think I did know about H top, but I don't use it. Uh, anyway, so let's see how much crap I lost here. Oh, are you kidding me? Oh, no, okay. I didn't really lose that much. Um, okay. This should not be painful, but let me go ahead and console log I here. And let me bump this up to plus point 50. I mean, there, this should be like a 12 step loop. Let's run it now. Get the console. Um, Jesus fucking Christ! I'm gonna wait. There's something funky going on here. Let me try stopping it from here. And seeing what we're getting is spitting out. Maybe this two times math pie needs to be like tightened up a little bit. Wait, but stop it from here because I want to see some results on the console. Jesus Christ. Um, it's good to use it all the time, but you have to install it, I think. It shows CPU, core, core and memory usage. I think ATOP, have you used ATOP before? Because I do have ATOP, I think. I probably have HTOP also, I just don't use it. Yep, I have HTOP. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and I think the problem is now Firefox is actually uh, running a whole bunch of sub-processes that are not getting killed off in time because every time I reload it tries to do a new process. So that is actually not good. ATOP. And I should say ATOP 1. I only want... I don't want the... Okay, here we go. Yeah, the web content is the stuff that's killing me. So let me do a pgrep on web. Yeah, so it's running like 10 bajillion different processes, which is probably why this is failing so miserably. So let's go ahead and uh, it shows you, okay, and so much mem, what, so much mem and cores? Um, let me do that again. It, there's not. I mean, this is a virtual machine. Um, oh, you mean it's using up so much mem and cores. Remember, this is a virtual machine, remember? So it's, it's, it, it, its usage is, is limited. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and p-kill web content. That's going to break a lot of my buffers. There we go. All dead now. Um, including this one. But now I'm only going to restore this tab, so that's going to ho hopefully help us out. So that was probably the problem is we were starting a bunch of processes and not killing them. I have now brutally killed them. Let's see what happens. Okay, not looking good. Not looking too good. Motherfucker. We'll do a wait, but we'll do a stop here. We'll do try to do a stop from here. Okay, so obviously I've done something, like, hideous that hopefully has nothing to do with what I'm trying to do. We'll wait, but we're going to try stopping it from here. If that doesn't work, we'll actually stop it from there. Okay, my only... My PC only has four cores and 8 gigs of RAM or so. I have six. I have 128 gigs of RAM on my main machine. Um, which you should be impressed by. Okay. This is not going well. Alright, let me do another peak hill of the web content here. My main machine is also not doing anything terrible. 
So now we will reload this again. Uh, yours is so big. Yeah, my RAM is huge, baby. That's why I can run VMs on it. I originally bought a machine that was really cheap, and I couldn't run. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change. Um, I'm going to not compute uh, this value of PT, which apparently is hideous to compute. It shouldn't be. I'm just going to console log I. Now, if this doesn't work, uh, much bad thing is happening. Am I doing anything else that's, like, really ugly? Anyway. Oh, here we are. Okay. So this fucking fuck fuck takes so long to evaluate that it breaks the whole fucking fuck fuck. I'm not happy about that. All right. We're going to break it down. Break it down. And see if this still breaks if we do it in a simpler way. I don't, I don't know if maybe JavaScript has a really bad um, stack. So if you try to do two things, you know, if you try to nest things, it doesn't work. But this is this is bullshit. Um, I officially declared this to be bullshit. So now we will just log these two wonderfully multiplied vectors, which should be very very fast. Go. That was pretty fast. I like that. So what this is telling me is my vectors add is stupid. Or it's just not doing it. So vectors add. The object that has v1 set to v1 and v2 set to v2. Doesn't that look beautiful? And I guess I want the result of that. One, two, three. What the fuck? <laughs> Motherfucker! Well, I, I've obviously written vectors out in such a terrible way that uh, that it breaks everything in the world. I didn't. Oh. I think I know what's wrong. I think maybe my for loop in the vectors add goes forever. So, uh, okay, but a question, can I use a plus infinity equals infinity and n times infinity equals infinity all the time? Is only infinity plus infinity undefined? No, you cannot, um, oh, now it gives me a result. Um, so if it gives me a result, it must be actually doing what it's supposed to do just very slowly. Um, no. Uh, infinity is undefined everywhere, and um, the, the reason for that is, let me go back a step, uh, the square root of minus 1 used to be undefined. Now someone, I think it was Gauss, uh, created a number, called it i, and, and put it into regular mathematics. Uh, the, the reason that worked is because he could find a way to, um, to insert i into our numerical system without breaking anything. Um, now, somebody else, or maybe it was Gauss also, inserted the quaternions into our system. That broke commutativity. You could no longer say A times B is B times A. And someone in introduced the octonions, which breaks associativity. Um, but so, so, the, so the idea is, if you want to change mathematics somehow, um, see if you can do it without breaking anything. But if you are going to break something, break the minimal stuff you can break. The problem is with infinity, um, because if you say that n times infinity is equal to m times infinity, because they're both infinity, then you can divide out infinity and have n equals m for any two numbers. That's one of the bad things you could do. Uh, it, and there's a whole bunch of other bad things you can do if you decide there's such, such a thing as infinity. Now you could, instead of call, you know, having a single infinity, you could say like 5 infinity plus 7 is a number. Just, just like 5i plus 7 is a number. Uh, but even that doesn't work. It turns out that you will break other rules of math very badly, even if you try to s set up a system, uh, you know, that uses infinity and constants together, like like we do for imaginary numbers. 
Uh, and I say that, and you might want to try it and see if you can do it. Maybe you will. Uh, but you run into issues because zero. What is the way going to say zero times infinity is? <coughs> and if you don't allow for that, how do you solve for equations like um, one over zero equals what infinity? So then, can you say zero times infinity equals one? You can't really say that though. And that is the that is the issue. So. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me see what I'm doing so terribly in vectors add that's causing all this commotion. Okay, so I declare a new array. Um, I don't see them doing anything this terrible here. Uh, why why is this so freaking slow? Well, you know what? Let's just return testing from it and see if this is the slow part or something else is really breaking here. So run. That was pretty quick. Undefined. Oh, right, because I'm trying to print it as a vector. Okay, stand by. Okay. So, let's see. But it was used in some lectures, so you have to evaluate this for each case. No, no, no. I mean, yes. Um, no, no. Okay. Sorry. I, mis I may have misspoke. I, infinity is not a number, but uh, you, can, you can integrate to infinity. Um, infinity is not a number, but it, it still has a very valid definition. Um, well, yes. When you say a limit, yes, yes. No, there it is defined. The integral of zero to infinity from zero to infinity of f of x is the limit as r approaches infinity of you know f of uh, integral of zero to r f of x. Uh, so, it, but it is defined. I mean, we do define that, but it's not a number. It's uh, it's you know, if we say a set is infinite, that has a meaning too. If we say the cardinality of a set is infinite it means that it can be put in one-to-one -one correspondence with uh, a subset of itself, something that, uh, a proper subset of itself, something that uh, regular sets obvi obviously can't, th that finite sets obviously can't do. So the word infinity does have meaning. You could say, you know, like, uh, um, what's one over x is x goes to infinity. That has an answer. That's zero. Um, but it's not a number. It's not, like, it's not like a real number. That's the issue. You have to treat it specially. You can't just treat it like a number. You have to sort of... There are actual mathematical definitions uh, whenever infinity is used. You know, you can define the limit to infinity. You can define the limit being infinity. If the limit of a function is infinity, positive infinity, we say that means that for all large numbers, there's a point where the function will always be bigger than them. I mean, you know, for all capital M, there exists x such that x0 greater than x implies fx0 greater than m, that kind of thing. But, uh, but yeah. So not a number, but still, um, but still, quite useful. So let me. See, what if I return this as an object like they want? S still pretty fast. Um. I mean, it's declaring a new array each time, but that should not be an issue. And taking the ith element of two uh, arrays should not be an issue. So now I'm going to pretend that like just because I did that, it's going to magically fix itself. Magically fix yourself, please. Wow. So have I hit some sort of weird JavaScript glitch? Or am I doing something wrong? Does 1 over x gives to 0 the harmonic series? Um, which is divergent. That's tr No, no. That, OK. Uh, 1 over x is a function. Y if you're thinking about the sum of 1 over n, 
you know, 1 over i from i goes 1 to infinity, that's a different thing. Um, that would be like 1 plus 1 half plus 1 third plus 1 fourth plus 1 fifth. That does diverge. Uh, but, um, um, and if you're asking whether the integral of 1 over x from 0 to infinity, or you can't really do it at 0, from 1 to infinity, that also diverges for pretty much the same reason. Uh, but the, the function 1 over x by itself, not integrated, does go to 0. As x goes to infinity, its integral does not go to 0. It goes to infinity. Okay. This, this, this is fucking weird. Clearly it works. Um, but also, in addition to being fucking weird, uh... Or is this only true for the sum all over? Yes, the integral of 1 over x is log x, but if you integrate that from 0 to infinity, it's infinity. Because log of infinity is, you know, it div log of x increases without bound. So if you integrate 1 over x uh, and then take it from zero to 1 to infinity or anything to infinity, it, is, it, does not, it does not converge. Just like the harmonic series doesn't converge. Um, usually things like 1, you know, like... Uh, f1 plus f2 plus f3 plus f4 dot 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 those things will normally converge close to where the, inter the integral is. They're an approximation of the integral. Um, I'm sure some of them find a pathological case where one of them diverges and the other one converges uh, yeah like a function that maybe is just uh, not a continuous function but a really ugly non-continuous function um where f of n is n if n is an integer, and f of n is 0 if, if f of x is 0 if, n is, if x is not an integer. That would integrate to 0, uh, but the sums, the partial, the sums of the uh, f of n would be infinite. That's an interesting relationship. Yes, uh, yeah, there's a... Maybe it was in the... the maybe. Um, there's... For continuous functions you can usually find an integral limit that approaches um, <laughs> uh, you never know um, you can think of this you know the, um, the sum of like you know f of 1 plus f of 2 plus whatever will approach as you know you, you get further and further the integral of f of x between some number and infinity <coughs> sorry sub number and your partial sums. So in other words, um, you'll see that the, uh, the sum of the uh, individual values and the integral approach each other uh, as you get further out. Uh, usually, I'm sure someone's going to find a counterexample where they both grow much too fast for that. Um, anyway, uh, in any case, um, partly because this is being uh, a fuckwad, and partly because I've been streaming for Motherfucker, almost two and a half hours. Damn. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call it a stream. We, we might get back to... Oh, now it's going to reload, of course, because I've said I'm going to go away. Um, and we will try to figure out why this is taking so long. It might be the redeclaration of res each time. I don't know. Um, it should not be doing that, though. I mean, that's, that's stupid. Okay, I'm going to end the stream now. Thank you for watching. Uh, let me see if anyone is watching other than Fierce Crocodile. Well, there's a few other people, at least with names, that appear to be watching. Um, or, you know, or bots or whatever. So I'm going to end the stream, and um, yesterday I said I was going to come back that day, and I didn't get come back yesterday. Uh, I'll say that I hope to come back uh, today, but I can't promise anything. So thank you for watching, and goodbye for now. <laughs>